is God is making perfume. God is making perfume. What an interesting title, huh? And uh, glory. Let's pray. Lord, I just thank you for your word again. Lord, I pray you'll help me to speak in the oracles of God. And Lord, I pray the word that you've put in me will come through me clearly. God, you'll give people's people ears to hear. Lord, I pray for those that are listening online. God, it'll be earth shattering, earth changing. God, I pray for those here. There'll be a fresh revelation that'll be imparted unto them. God, that will carry forth throughout all the nations. In Jesus' strong name we pray. And everyone said, Amen. 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 So God is making perfume. And before I get started today, I'm just going to talk to you all a little bit. Did anything happen this week in our nation? I don't talk much about uh, political things because Jesus is still the answer for everything. And if we give people Jesus, it takes care of everything. You don't hear me uh, much talk about uh, those things, but we don't. The Bible says we're in the world, but not of the world. Amen? So we can't deny the fact what we're living in. But how many know that Jesus is still the answer? He's still the one that changes things. But did, So did something go on this week that's got everybody in an uproar? And, and rightly it should. As an American, I'm upset about their choices, but it still does not change my kingdom stance. It has zero effect on my kingdom citizenship which is what matters the most. I've been to, I've, listen, Bolivia, when their president got elected, he went down to the Incan altars and sacrificed four homeless guys. That was his way of thanking his gods for his uh, presidential win. But you know what? The people in Bolivia that are on fire for God does not let that alter what they do for God one bit. It does not alter what they preach even in the face of great adversity. I've been to lots of other countries across the world and their government is not for Christ. It never has been. doesn't play any bombs about it. And guess what? It does not affect the gospel of Jesus Christ. It does affect how they have to live their life some. And I don't like the freedoms that I'm giving up in America. I don't like the things I'm giving up. I don't believe it's what's been intended, but it does not mean that Romans 8.28 is still not true. If you don't know what Romans 8.28 says, it says, all things work together for good for them that are called according to that are called according to God's purpose. I, I butchered that scripture. But all those that are all things work together for good that those for those that love God that are called according to his purpose. So it didn't just say all things work together for your good. I see a lot of people trying to claim that scripture, but they're not loving God. You say, well, how do you know that, Pastor? Because if you love God, the Bible says you keep His commandments. You do your best to hit the mark. And they're out there in a mess trying to claim that verse for themselves. There's a lot of people going to be trying to do that the season that's coming, and they don't have a leg to stand on, and it's very sad. Come on, I'm preaching this morning. Are you with me? Now does God, is, it, listen, but God's, God came, why? John 3.16, one of the most well-known verses. Why, why, did, why did Jesus come? To save the world. To save the world. So that God gave His only beloved Son that whosoever should believe in Him should not perish, but have her everlasting life. Now, has God changed His mind? Has God thrown in the towel and says, Forget it, I'm done with them yet. No. So what is God's purpose still in these last days? To seek and save the lost. Come on, I'm preaching this morning. What is God's purpose still? To seek and save the lost. He gave His Son that all should come to know Him. Unfortunately, some of them don't know that they need Him yet. That's where our job comes in. Some of them are so deceived they don't know what end is up. That is where our job comes in. Amen? But if you tell them that, well, God's already judged you, He don't love you, you're not telling them the truth. 
Now, they may have to reap some of their own actions, but the whole point is to bring them to God, not from God. Right. Everything that God does is to bring His people to Him, not push them away from Him. America just made a huge a negative choice. It's huge. It's huge the consequences it's going to have on the body of Christ. If you don't know, the Supreme Court just ruled it's same-sex marriage. Which is a sin according to God, but I'm going to address that because sin is still sin. Let me, let me just hold on to this for, with me for a minute before I die. So they did that. So what that means, I'm going to tell you, but how many if you've been around here very long, this isn't news to see the Broken Change Church. Because God has been preaching and prophesying about this for quite a season. Are you with me? And so, what, but what it means is that someday very soon, they're probably going to come want to throw me in jail because I refuse to marry someone of the homosexual, uh, uh, that, that are in homosexual sin. And they're going to say that the message that I'm, I'm preaching right now is a hate crime. That I'm hating on someone because of their sin. I'm not hating on anyone. I just treat all sin the same. And if you've been around here very long, I've probably ruffled most of y'all's feathers at one time talking about one type of sin or another. You but, wouldn't care, see? but the the good thing was is that you received it even though it ruffled your feathers and you repented and turned because you heard the gospel. You heard what it had to say and you lined your life up with the Word and you seen the blessings from it because God wants all things that work together for your good. He's not trying to punish you, but you will get yourself punished if you stay in sin. That's your choice, not His. Amen? So they made this huge choice and everybody's in an uproar. And I'm just going to go ahead and preach some of this and then we're going to go to the Word. Everybody's in an uproar now for a little bit. But guess what? In two weeks from now, nobody will be talking about it again at all. Except for the ones that were already talking about it before. Because see, it didn't just happen. It's been happening for years. There's been a moral decline for years. And I'm going to tell you this morning by the Spirit of God why it's happened, how it's happened, and what we can do to change it. It's happened because people have had unrepented sin in their own life so they didn't want to talk to somebody else about sin and theirs because they didn't want to get their own life in order so they justified everybody else's and they kept justifying it and they kept justifying it until now we've gotten where our country has went to hell in a handbasket because they didn't want to clean up their own house. And the judgment of God needs to begin in the house of God where preachers are preaching the truth and where Christians are doing their best to live their walk out. I'm not talking about being perfect. I'm talking about until you recognize you've sinned, you can't even repent from it. And they've taken that out. I mean, there's churches that are drinking and doing everything else that goes against the Word of God and people want to call it gray areas. There's no gray area in the Word of God. That's how we've gotten this mess. That's called you enabling yourself with the spirit of justification, which is demonic. And now America is, is looks like it's going to hell in a hand. i got some great news for you this morning we're about to get to. Well, let's just be real about how we got here. But see, the great news is God started work, God formed this church. God breathed this church into life. He brought you all up in it. And you all have already been walking a different walk than everybody else for quite some time. Because you've started dealing with your stuff. And see, when you deal with your stuff, then you can speak life and truth and love into somebody else's life. Because see, people, they want their conscience to get so messed up, they can't, they'll say, well, I can't say nothing to them. I'm doing this over here. There's nobody I don't know about it. Now, that's how the enemy has silenced the church in America. I'm preaching the truth this morning. Are you with me? Amen. And it's time for the church to be the church. I wrote, I wrote this earlier this week. God spoke this to me. I'm going to read it to you. Some of you may have already read it. It says, Everybody is commenting on a Supreme Court ruling today. I put this on Facebook because I felt like it needed to be shared. 
He said, this started way before today. Judgment begins in the house of God and with His people. It's time to repent and get off the self-gratifying fence. See, that's because we draw this thing where we try to satisfy ourselves always when we try to satisfy God. If you're truly in love with God, you want to satisfy Him. But we've always tried to feed our flesh some way. We've always tried to self-satisfy ourselves. And it's led us to this moral decline in America. Are you all with me? You've got to get off the fence. That means you've got to truly see it, repent, and turn. And I said, I'm talking about the body of Christ here. But then here is the good part that I'm going to go to here very shortly. Are you all with me still? It says, but a rose smells the best under pressure. So be it. When pressure comes from truly lining up and living the Word of God and standing for what is right and we are under pressure, let's show them Jesus and spark a revival like the world has never seen. Because see, those things are coming. Those persecutions are coming from living right now. But the great news is, is when pressure comes, Jesus can be exemplified and it can spark a move of God like the world has never seen. And the great news is, is I believe he's been, I'm ahead of myself here, but I believe he's been preparing the people of Broken Chains Church for such a time as this. I believe the pressure's already been on in your lives, but God, God is preparing you to be able to start speaking out in a season in this. Whenever, whenever to be watchmen on the wall, declaring truth, declaring it with love, declaring that God, there is a better way, declaring that God can do these things. I believe God has prepared this church for this season. I believe a lot of things you've been going through is for such a time as this. And God has dedicated, He set it apart, and He's about to raise this place up. He's about to raise some of you up. Some of you don't even think you can talk. He's going to raise you up and give you a voice to talk. Amen. Because He's been preparing this house because people need hope. And God is still a God of hope. Amen. But it's good. See, but you can't, you can't get ready for the pressure. When the pressure comes, you've got to be ready. Right. And that starts by getting your life in order. And you can start today if you wanted to. But I believe there's been a lot that's already started around here. And you felt the pressure from it. But it's because there's such a time as this that our nation is under that He's going to start using us to be a sweet-smelling Savior. A perfume that's going to go around. Man, that smells good. Man, I want some of that. I don't... Oh, that just smells good. In a world that's totally stinking... He's going to have a sweet-smelling perfume, a sweet-smelling people that the more the pressure is applied, the sweeter they're going to smell. Come on, you somebody ought to be shouting this morning. Come on, are you with me? I'm going to read this uh, to you. I found it was interesting. It goes along with it. How many in here has ever made perfume? Anybody ever made perfume? We got one. I've never made it all the way from fresh flowers, but I want to, I want you to read this process to you this morning. Tell me if this sounds familiar to some of the messages and some of the things you've been going through. Number one is find the flowers that you like. <laughs> I mean, you know, Jesus has been looking for a people that he likes, that he loves, ones that are already doing the work. Come on, are you with me? It says, wash the flowers, removing all dirt and other possible contaminants. Get saved, set free, wash that stuff off. That's how perfume starts. And then it says, add some water in, that living water, into a pan and turn the heat up till it boils. Till it gets so hot that all the junk starts coming to the top. Sound familiar to anybody this morning? And then it says when you're done with that, then it says finally it'll turn to steam. That means it'll be nothing left but the pure, the pure things. And put the petals in a pan, work the water just to just below boiling, and then simmer after you've done this. Now you're going to put the flowers in, you're going to let them just sit there and simmer with the heat on this, we, we've been talking about the listen the Bible says the trials of our faith were how many messages have this church heard how many seasons have this church been walking in that you've already been experiencing come on is somebody getting a revelation this morning 
And then let them simmer. And you don't want to cook the flowers. This will ruin the simmer. So you can't rush this simmering process. You can't rush the simmering process. Come on, are you with me this morning? I'm going to show this to you in the Word of God. Hold on, y'all know me better than that. <laughs> and then it says, uh, let the contents simmer for about two hours. Make sure you keep a steady supply of water, steady supply of the Holy Ghost. And then let the contents cool. And then strain the contents until the cheese, and through a cheesecloth cheese cloth until all the solid bits are gone. So then after it's been cooked, strained, purified, and then you're going to make sure there's nothing left but just a pure liquid. Of no chunks of flowers left, nothing left but the pure stuff. And then you're going to put it in a bottle, ready for someone to smell. When you smell perfume, do you think of all the process that thing's gone through, or you just enjoy the smell? Enjoy the smell. In the last days, people aren't going to know what you've walked through to be able to have that sweet-smelling sacrifice. We're going to look at it in a minute. But they're going to know, hey, there's something there that I want. Come on, are you with me? Glory to God. Well, some of you are needing some word for that. Turn to Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1. It says, Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love. Now, I've preached on this a lot around here. We talk about our love walk. How many has ever found walking in love easy? Is it easy to walk in love? No. no, no. But is it possible through God? Of course. Amen? Amen? But it's a walk, isn't it? It's something you have to work through, isn't it? I mean, you know, learning to walk in love when the whole, whole world around you is stinking is vital in the last days. Amen. 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 That means you can't be offended for people whenever you're standing up for the truth in love. You have to walk in love. Because the more pressure they put on you, and they're going to put pressure on you, it should be the sweeter the smell. But sometimes there's a process, just like we read, some of those trials. Remember, we've been talking about that the last few weeks. And tribulations, God's working on our character. And He'll be working on it until the day we die. And I want to get to be more and more like Jesus. But the more He processes me, the finer my perfume gets where they smell Jesus instead of Brian. Amen? Amen. Walk in love as Christ has also loved us. See, you know, if Jesus decided to dislike me every time I did something against Him or had done something against Him, it wouldn't be much of a love relationship between us. He'd have ditched me a long time ago. But He loved me even when I was unlovable. How much more should we love one another? Amen? Amen. But see, some people... I, just, I want to say this. The Holy Spirit spoke this yesterday to me. I want to think this is a good time to throw this out here. Loving someone is not the same as condoning someone. Amen. Holyos spoke this very clearly. <laughs> Loving someone is not the same as condoning someone. But the world, has took, they, they just want you to condone them. They don't really want you to love them. They want you to condone them in whatever they're doing in because whenever you're around them, the light is particularly penetrating darkness and are getting convicted. And if you love them, you would condone them because that's what they do for one another. That is not love. Love speaks the truth. Love cares what actually happens to one another. Amen? Amen. Love is not condoning. Amen? We'll move along here this morning. So, what are love is Christ loved. Amen? And have given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice unto God. Now, Jesus went all the way. He gave his whole life. How much more then should we? So does that tell you how the process comes to make perfume? Do you see the process Jesus went through to become that sacrifice? The Bible says to pick up our cross daily, crucifying our flesh, putting our self-gratifying self on the cross. And, 
and, and lining it up with the Word of God? Are you seeing that this morning? That that's what Jesus is asking for, for us to be the type of perfume that's going to be life-shattering, revival-making in these last days. Can you see where He's already been doing that in your life, Broken Change Church? Can you be excited this morning that you're going to get to be some of the forerunners and the move of God that's coming? That revival He's already birthing in you because you've been letting Him work on you even though it's been very uncomfortable. Even though you would rather have just taken another way out. But you didn't. And you've been staying the course. And He's about to flow something through you in these last days. If you'll just hold on and keep working it out, let Him keep pressing you into that thing so that you can be a sweet-smelling perfume to those that are in a, in a world where everything just stinks around them because they've been self-gratifying. Are you with me? Yeah. And it says, For a sweet-smelling Savior, which equals perfume there, See, He Himself. That's what He's asking us to be. He's asking us to stay in the press. He's asking us to sacrifice ourselves. Because see, I believe God right now in this season, when, whenever we've made some of the dumbest choices there is, I believe He foreseen is what's it's been coming. Listen, there is, there is a war going on. Let's not be naive between good and evil. And Satan is waging all he's got and, God's, and the church has been sleeping, afraid to offend anybody, and afraid to walk in love, and afraid to say anything, because their house has not been in order itself. Come on, I'm preaching this morning. Amen. Can somebody can say, are you seeing this? Yes. And I'm not, a, I, I, listen, my heart breaks for them. But the good news is that if they'll shift it and turn, but somebody has to start putting the perfume out there. Somebody has to be the people that say it's worth it. It's worth it. I, I, Brother Tommy Scott, he was ministering uh, to me this week, and uh, he called me, and he was telling a story of ministering and seeing great moves of God. And in his spirit, he, he kept hearing, and he heard another man say it one time. As he was ministered, he kept saying, it's worth it. It's worth it. And thousands were being healed. And this other great man of God would kept saying it. And Brother Tommy said, I started saying, he said, I started realizing it. He says, the people doesn't know what it costs to walk in that level of anointing. They don't know all the times without food and the, and the lack of sleep and the prayer and all the persecution, all the things it took to get that type of perfume to be able to come out. And they would just say, it's worth it. And church, I want to tell you, in these coming days, you're going to find yourself saying, it's been worth it. It's been worth it. And when you see that loved one come to Jesus, when you see those miracles happening, you're going to look at yourself and you're going to say, it's been worth it. Because I'm here to encourage you this morning that God is making perfume in these last days. He's putting the presses on. He's putting the pressure on because He's raising up a body that's going to go after Him with all their heart. That's going to be a sweet smelling perfume. That the lost are going to smell it. And they're going to say, I want some of that. Amen. 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 But let me tell you the things that he's got to remove. On down here in verse 3. See, uh, yesterday, that, I, it's, just, it's been happening for quite some time. See, everybody is on the homosexuals now. They're just bashing them. Let's just be honest. They're all upset and having a heyday. And homosexuals is a sin. God says it's an abomination and He hates it. But you know what? It's a demonic influence. They're possessed. And, and they need deliverance. The same as a drug addict. The same as an alcoholic. The same as a liar. The same as someone that fights. And they need someone to love them enough to tell them the truth and then stay around them and keep loving them. Loving them means you have a relationship with them even if they might still dislike you and say hurtful things to you. Telling them the truth and walking off and leaving them is not love. Come on. Yes, amen. But, so, and the truth is that so many people have bought into this thing and the enemy's been able to keep them silent all along and, and, and you know, 
it said, well, let me just read this here. It says, but fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness. Now notice it put having sex and wanting somebody else's stuff all in the same sentence. Y'all with me this morning? Or uncleanness, that means something you've done to get yourself out of, out of the presence of God. It said, let it not be named once among you as you as become a saints. That means don't let me catch you doing this. Now God can forgive you and deliver you, but we're not going to enable you. There's a difference. Are you with me? It says, need that not listen. Here's where I'll, it always got interested. I, I preached this a lot in my younger ministry, and it was so popular there. I'm sure it'll be popular this morning. <laughs> It says neither filthiness nor foolish talking. Now, now we're talking about fornication, going out sleeping around, the same as someone that's uh, talking out of, out, out, of, out of both sides of their mouth. Are you with me? Or nor jesting. That means making fun of somebody else at your expense, which is rampant today. I hear preachers doing it from the pulpit. It makes me sick. I have heard some, but I don't hear them again. I can tell you that. Here's the deal. If i got to tear somebody else to build myself up, there's something wrong inside me, and I need deliverance, and I need to get my heart right. That's what jesting means. You can say, oh, I'm just having fun. No, you're not. There's, a, there's something attached to you that's not right that you need deliverance from. The same as all the other things we're talking about. Everybody see that this morning? That was so popular, wasn't it? It's so much easier to talk about homosexuality, isn't it? But see, we've let this become rampant in the church. How did, listen, this is not happen overnight. We've enabled all these things and not talked about it. Well, we've talked about it around here. That's why you all are ready. You say, well, Pastor, come on. We've had enough of this. No, it's time for you to tell somebody else then. In love. It's time for us to be the, the voice. Come on, are you with me? Which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. You know, it's much easier to thank somebody than it is to, to berate them. Honestly, it is. Although it may not be as much fun sometimes. Just thank them for, you know. I've had people doing all kinds of things. And I'll say, oh, just bless your heart. Thank you so much. And, you know, they really don't know what to say. They kind of look at me like, and, and then they just turn around and walk off. It's over. Why? Because the Word of God works. That was free. For it is known that... Now, now listen up. You, you all need to pay attention here. For it is known that no whoremonger, that means someone sleeping around, nor unclean person, no covetous man who is an adulterer, that means somebody that's putting something before God. Listen, if it's more important to you than God, it's an idol. This is what we're talking about here. Let's not let's let's not take it out of context. Let's just be real this morning. So if someone that's sleeping around, we everybody can get usually talk. Even ones that are sleeping around, they can usually all agree that's wrong. But they don't want to talk about the idol. Maybe. Come on. Amen. They don't want to talk about how they've been coveting somebody else's life or or somebody else's house, they don't want to put in the work, they'd rather covet it. Or they can't just be learned to be content in what God's blessed them with. Amen? Amen. Amen? Much easier to talk about homosexuals, isn't it? Are y'all still with me this morning? Yeah. It says, have any, have any inheritance in the kingdom of God? And so that whoremonger there actually also means, uh, for the record, homosexual. I'm going to throw that out there. And uh, so, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of God? So, we know that people sleeping around, homosexuals, you're not going to make heaven. Period. If you're doing these things, you're not going to make heaven. Heaven. You say, well, preacher, I'm not perfect, but I'm trying. Here, here's the deal. 
we're in a sanctification process, the first thing you have to do is recognize it's a sin. And the enemy has turned it now where it's even a hate crime to say things are sin. So now he's bound people by these demonic things. Are you with me? But it started because nobody wanted to deal with the other sins. They wanted to say, I've made a mistake. They didn't want to say, I've sinned. Come on, are you with me? That's how we've opened the doorway up. This morning, you're going to have to say, I've sinned. You need to repent and turn. Turn means to totally do away with it. And then guess what? There are certain things the Bible says in Luke 4.18. It's what this church is founded on. But He will break those chains. Listen, I'm going to tell you homosexuality and those things. He doesn't tell you how to fight it. He tells you to flee from it. And, and, and it goes with every other fornication. It goes with every other type of sexual sin. He tells you to flee from it. And it's a demonic influence. And God can deliver you drastically from it. But the enemy will come back along and tempt you. And you've got to learn how to shut the door. Come on, are you with me? And apply the Word of God. And it works. If you work the Word, it works. And as you do that, you'll become a sweet-smelling sacrifice. Moving along for time's sake. Let no man deceive you with vain words. Now, in the time we're living in, there's tons of people that are enabling someone to live in sin. He knew it would be this way. He said, don't let them deceive you. Don't let them tear you apart. Amen? For because of these things come the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Because there is the wrath of God that's coming. And we're going to see some more and more of this as the pressure's turned up. And they're going to say, and they're going to be quoting the Word, they're going to be doing all these things, but they're not going to be living it. And they're not going to be a sweet-smelling perfume. But we're going to be. Amen? Amen? It says, but not ye therefore are partakers with him, for you sometimes you were sometimes darkness, but now you are light. Walk as the children of light. Amen. Skip on down to uh, verse 15. See then you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the day is real. Listen. The time is short. It's time to be about Father's business. On that note, I want you to turn over to 1 Corinthians 6 9, and then I'm going to start preaching again real quick. Are you with me? Let's read the Word. I'm here seeing everything I've already preached in the Word of God this morning now. 1 Corinthians 6 9 says, Know ye not that unrighteousness shall not inherit the kingdom of God? What's unrighteous? Anything that goes against the Word of God. How do I stay in the righteousness of Christ? Is it through my own strength? No. It's through Jesus Christ when I repent and turn and put on His robe of righteousness. And how do I stay under it? I says, he says, if you love me, you keep my commandments. It means it, it's not, it doesn't become about duty. It becomes about love. It means I love God so much that I want to do what is right. And when I mess up, I recognize it and I repent and turn from that thing. I don't keep doing that thing over and over and over. And I start aiming for the mark more and more to become more and more like Jesus. And the more that pressure pressure comes on me, the more sweet smelling perfume is going to come out of me in the last days. Woo. Are you all ready for that, church? He's already been doing it with you, through you, and to you. Amen. Amen. But so no unrighteousness. You know, I'm shocked. You know, my, my Facebook feed would blow up over this. But I would say less than 1% were any place where they could take the beam out of somebody else's eye because they had so much theirs. What do you mean? The, the Bible didn't say we couldn't judge. He just said, deal with your, put your own house in order before you say something to somebody else on that subject. That's what the Word of God says. They weren't going to church. They weren't living right. They were drinking. They were doing everything else, but they were all fired up over this, and in two weeks they won't even care no more to be on to the next whatever thing this culture is saying they're upset about. Church, it's time for us just to be the church. The gospel still works. It's still full of hope. It's still full of peace. 
It's time for us when the pressures come, for us to exude Jesus to a dying world so they're going to know who, who to reach out for in these last days. Are you with me today? Amen. So, isn't it not a pretty serious statement to say they're not going to inherit the kingdom of God? How many want to make heaven? How many realize that if you don't, if you're walking these things and you're really not repenting that we're talking about this morning, you're not going to make heaven. But you can stay under the blood. I mean, we're having a choosing to stay under the blood. And that means when the Holy Ghost is a gentleman, when He comes knocking on your door to deal with something, deal with it. Don't try to justify. The spirit of justification is what's got the work, America and the church in a, in a mess that it's in. He didn't just say deal with the sins everybody can see. See, homosexuality, everybody can usually see. Whether or not you're covering somebody, or and then you know, somebody might say something about homosexuality. But what about the person that's jesting in the wrong sense? Most people don't say nothing about them; they just put up with it. <coughs> Except for around here, I usually. Come on, are you with me? Call this them out. Yeah, amen. It says, "Be not deceived." Pay attention, church. I know I'm going a little long this morning. I'm not jumping and shouting. But this is the Word of God for this hour. If God says, be not deceived, you should put a, your double glasses on. You should Your ears should perk up and you should say, I'm paying attention. It says, neither fornicators, nor adulterers, nor, nor idolaters. So, people that's having sex outside marriage. Those are putting things before God. Those that are sleeping around with their, their spouse. And, and Matthew 5, 28 says, if you even look upon a woman and lust after your heart, that means woman or man, and that you've already committed adultery. So if you're having impure thoughts, now listen, there's a difference between the enemy trying to put a thought in your mind mm -hmm. and it being your thought. Okay. And if the enemy throws a dart in there and tries to put something, you take that thought captive. Okay. It's not yours. It's only sin if you act upon it. That's the battle we're in. Everybody understand that this morning? Yeah, amen. Nor everybody, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. It's talking about homosexuals. They will, because you're going to abuse yourself. You're going to abuse your body. Nor thieves. You know, there's another verse that says, you were once a thief, let you steal no more, go and do good to all those of the body of Christ. Listen, Jesus ain't against thieves. He's just against you continually in that after you've made him more of your life. He gave his life so that you could be free and live. He's not against homosexuals. He's just against them continuing to do that because he wants better for them. And the only way they're going to know is if we will walk in love and tell people the truth. And as the pressures come on. Listen, church, you, you, there's a very good chance you could become persecuted for taking a stance about what is right. I did. And if you don't have your life in order now, it will not be a sweet-smelling sacrifice. And I'm sorry to say, we're going to probably see a lot of ugly stuff that may even come out of the church during this season. Are you with me? But I'm believing there's going to be a unity and a shifting that's coming. Where people are going to say, all right, it's time to get things in order. Come on, are you with me, church? Oh, man, yes. I'm not boring you, am I? No. <laughs> nor covetous, nor drunkards. Uh... For those that don't know, I've taught a whole course on drinking. The Bible's not gray about it. For the record, to be a drunkard here, according to this, and the Greek, that just means you got to drink. Period. It didn't say try to get one or two. And for the record, why do you want to mess around with something that's counterfeit when you've got the Holy Ghost and He's the best new one? Well, you're not going to make heaven messing with that stuff. But the church has let all that creep in. But yet now we're upset that homosexuality has passed our courts. We've been killing more babies every year. 
when the Nazis killed the Jews. Thou shalt not kill is one of the commandments. You can justify it all you want. It's murder. Now, can God forgive you if you've had an abortion? Yes. Can God forgive you and deliver you if you've been homosexual? Yes. I'm not here to beat on you. I'm here to tell you Jesus loves you and wants to set you free. But I'm here to tell you we cannot we cannot enable those things. We cannot justify those things. Man can in every way seems right to his own man. But it's the Spirit of God that tells us what's correct. If we're left to our own devices, we always make a mess. But it's because we've gotten so far away from the Lord of God. But I'm here to tell you, God is raising up a church in these last days. That's going to be, when the pressure's on, they're just going to smell sweeter and sweeter as they walk in the love of Jesus. Listen, one of the reasons why I'm so forgiven is I know who I was before He saved me. I didn't deserve the forgiveness and mercy I got. Most people today, I tell some of my stories from my past, and most of y'all don't believe me. You look at me like, there's no way Pastor Brian was that guy. But I was, but I'm so thankful. And how dare I not try to reach out my hand to somebody else and tell them, listen, there is a better life. Poverty has no hold on you. Your past has no hold on you. If God be for you, who can be against you? You can change your life, but you've got to let Jesus first change who you are on the inside. And when the pressure's on, you've got to respond to it and let His perfume start coming out of you and get all the junk out along the way. And you'll have such a life that it'll be life-changing to all those around you in these last days. Come on, I'm preaching this morning, church. Amen. Nor drunkards, nor re revelers. Anybody ever been around somebody that likes to start stuff? likes to fight. We call them drama queens, drama makers. That's what a reveller is. One that just likes to stir up stuff. It's also ones that stir discord and strife which God says He'll spit them out of their mouth. He says He hates them. Let me just tell you something. Uh, as pastor that's been doing this a while, the Bible says let the wheats and tares grow up together and God will separate them out. Amen? Amen. Here's the key, folks. God, God, are y'all listening? Y'all ready for some revelation this morning? Amen. He didn't tell us to yank them out of the church. If you try to yank them out, you're going to make a mess. Yeah. Let God work on them. Let God change them. You just keep love them and tell them the truth. Do not condone them. Do not enable them. There's revelers in church. I've had people that are homosexuals in this church. Some of them got set free. Some of them chose not to. But it wasn't because the Word wasn't presented. The same as drug addicts have got set free, radically saved. The same as drug addicts have got set free. The same as people that had a, the wrong spirit and the wrong heart. They got he, You know, people with the spirit of jest, you know what usually they need? They need healing of a, of a heart. See, these are things that we learn that we can give to people for the tools to come free. Are you with me? Amen. But the truth is they're not going to make heaven. And if they need to, who needs the gospel more than people that you know aren't going to make heaven? It's not, but it's our job to love them. Show them that there's a way out of that. There's a better way. But it's not condoning them. The church has tried to be so... Uh, politically correct that they haven't offended anybody that they've lost all their power. I'm not worried about being politically correct. I'm worried about being kingdom minded correct. Amen. And I want to but I want to love but I want to but when you pressure me, when you kick back at me, I'm going to do my best. I'm a work in progress that I'm going to respond in love. And if I don't, I'm going to apologize to you and then I'm going to come back at you with more love. Because I'm human. The key is recognizing it. Come on, are you with me this morning? Yeah. I mean, I wish I could tell you every time that you poked me, prodded me, cut me, hurt me, that I would always be perfect in my response. But I probably will not be. But I will probably always get it right. In, I know I probably I will always get it right in the end because I'm chasing Jesus.
Amen? Amen. Amen. So none of these shall inherit the kingdom of God. Here's the part that always ministered to me. Are you all paying attention this morning? Verse 11. It says, And such were some of you. If you were honest in here this morning, you could all say, I was some of those. I've been some of these people. It says, but you are washed, but you are sanctified. See, when you ask Jesus into your life, all that stuff gets washed away. And sanctified means He starts aiming you more towards the mark. So when you're aiming and you miss the mark, He corrects your aim. So you start aiming better and better at it. You don't just justify it. And to, so sin means to miss the mark. If I know if I hit it or if I don't, and when I don't, I repent and I correct my aim. So I'm aiming at it better and better so that I become more and more of a sharpshooter hitting for the truth of the Word of God. I'm not just saying, well, that's just how God made me. He didn't make me that way. It may be however I came out. But listen, He says old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. Come on. He says, I'm a new creation in Christ. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. Whenever I ask Him into my life, all those things break off. All these things fall away. I don't have to try to enable it. I just got to start aiming for the mark and let Him correct me. Let Him sanctify me. Let me become more of a man just like Him. But I can't condone it. That's someone trying to clean their own self up. It's impossible. You know, yeah, it's, that's just funny, ain't it? I mean, trying to clean your own self up. Anybody's tried it knows how fruitless that is. You can't do it. You know, but homosexuality, this demonic thing, it's had a mission. The enemy has had a mission. He's attacking our kids. He's attacked our schools. Well, I don't even want to send my kids to school. The stuff they're teaching them. But the church has enabled it because they didn't want to offend nobody. But it's also because the church didn't want to deal with their stuff in their own house. I want to say some things, and if it, and listen, I'm not preaching to anyone this morning or about anyone, but everybody can always say they relate. How many of you know, listen, when people really get in the house of God, you know, let me just start off with this way. I've been around churches where people try to tell people what to wear when they come to church. I've never seen that work. You know what I've seen work? Come, let them hear the truth, let them hear the Word of God, love on them. And then if there's something wrong with the way they're dressing and they really choose to start surrendering to God, God you'll start seeing a change in the way they dress. But if you tell them, then something's wrong. Now, God may tell you to say something, but not not very very rare. Are you, are you with me? Because that sweet-smelling perfume inside you will start convicting them about however what's going on. The same way, there's been people that's come to church here. They've been living together in sin and doing things. And if I'd have said, you sinner, you're going to hell. They had ran. But you know what happened? The Word of God convicted them. People, different ones have changed. They decide they want to live right, do right, or they've repented and turned, changed and stopped doing those things because there is a sweet-smelling sacrifice. Listen, I loved them. This church body has loved people. And they know we didn't condone those things, but they also know that we weren't trying to beat them out of the meeting. Come on, are you with me? How much more are we to do that to others? Do you, are you seeing the difference? Hey, for some of you that's feeling uncomfortable this morning, I had it done to me. When I went back to Salem Full Gospel, I smoked the first two years I was there. And I took it real slow, but I smoked because I didn't want to preach. Not that they were asking me to, but I knew what the calling upon my life, and I knew as long as I was smoking, there ain't no way this young man's going to put me behind the pulpit somewhere, praise God. That, that's good that they didn't. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. But, you know what? I, I've told this story many times, and some of you get a... a find this funny, and I'm just doing this to minister to some this morning and bring this home. 
Pastor Billy, how many know remember Pastor Billy, my spiritual father? He's a West Point grad. He might know what West Point is. Yeah. Big military academy yeah. where all the elite military officers go. And if you throw a cigarette ground, a bed on the ground at West Point, they make you dig a six foot by six foot hole, bury it, and then dig it up again and then throw it away. This is how he came. And so when I came back, I still tossed cigarette butts on the ground outside church. And it went through him. He hated it. Are you with me? And somebody told me he hated it. And I knew how Christians were supposed to act. And I'll be honest, I was in the wrong heart. See, y'all wonder why I know so much. Maybe it's because I've done so many dumb things. <laughs> One day he was out there and they told me, and I thought, I'm just going to see how he reacts. And so while he was watching me, I flipped my cigarette on the ground and put it out before I walked into the church. <laughs> and uh, he said... He said it took everything within him not to say something. But he said, he said that it, see the difference is is God had spoke to him. Because he was going to come to me and put me in my right place. And tell me how disrespectful that was. And God spoke to him and he said, You do not say a word to my boy. He don't say nothing to him. I've got him right where I want him and I'm working on him. And if you say anything to him, if you open your mouth, I'm going to spank you like you've never seen. And he said, you know, it was one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. He said, but it taught me so much in my ministry. Because I look back now and think, where would you, where, look at all the things God's done with you. And I could have destroyed it just by trying to, to fix you. And God, and God was already convicted me. He was already dealing with me. Now, here's the deal. If someone, here's where, I'm going to clarify this for some. Because some of you say, well, you've said some things, Pastor. Here's the deal. Whenever God has dealt with someone, for so long and they've refused and they've refused and they've refused and then he shut up with somebody had and, and here had it said he will send along a prophet at the last minute before they're about to make a huge mess a lot of times and he'll speak into their life but it, it's it's only after he's been dealing with you so long and you've been so resistant to him dealing with you and it's always out of love amen <laughs> And until God speaks, listen, if you've been around your own, I don't come talk to you unless God tells me because I usually don't enjoy all that stuff any more than you do. You say, what's the stuff? Well, you all get tense when I come talk to you. <laughs> I don't enjoy it. You know, I'm being God's mouthpiece, but you're not looking at God, you're looking at me. Come on, I'm being real this morning. Are you with me? But did I know it was wrong to be smoking? Yes. Did I know it was sin? Yes. You say, would you die? Would you want to hell? I don't know. But I didn't have to find out. Come on, I'm preaching this morning. Are you with me? Amen. So in these last days, you know, is homosexuality wrong? Yes, so is lying. So is being deceitful. So is drinking, drugging, and living half-heartedly for the Lord. And those three don't always go together. Amen? Sin is sin. If we love God, we're going to do our best to hit His mark. But I, I really, I said all of that because we've heard this many times around here. Y'all just give me a little bit more minutes here. We've been through a lot as a church and you've been through a lot as individuals. I'm really excited. I'm not excited about the pressures that's about to come for the world and for America, but I'm excited about the move of God that's just about to break forth. I'm excited about the revival that's about to come. But He's going to flow through people that He's tried and found true. And we're going to be a He's making perfume right now. Right in this very moment, He's making perfume in your life and in this church. 
and out of the church. He's making a sweet-smelling Savior. He's, he's making something that's going to draw the world in. Come on, how many can see that this morning? It's what He's making. And I'm so thankful that I get to be a part of it. And for a long time, I haven't understood a lot of things He's been doing, to be honest. But through this, I'm starting to just get a little bit more revelation. Are you with me? I'm so thankful to get to be part of the perfume in these last days. When the whole world's stinking, church, we're going to be smelling just like Jesus. Isn't that good? And as if I was preaching this morning, you got convicted over something, then praise God, that's good. That means your conscience isn't seared. Amen? Amen. That means that you still haven't when you haven't got yourself in such a mess that God can't deal with you no more. And you can repent and come out of it. And you can make a choice today to start start heading to down that process. Amen? Amen. Isn't that so good? Yes. And listen, if I was preaching today and the enemy brought up stuff that's already been under the blood, do me a favor. Tell him to take a flying leap. <laughs> I didn't bring it up to beat you up, and neither did God. Maybe, to, if anything, just look and see how far you have came and be excited about where you're going. Amen? Amen. Amen. The enemy is the accuser of the brother, not God. If it's under the blood, you already corrected it. Don't let him come accuse you. Tell him to just take a hike. I encourage some of you need to do it right now. Just in Jesus' name, take a hike. You say, what's that What's that apply to? Well, this is the Bible says we're washing ourselves in the blood of the land. It washes off those offenses, those attacks. Amen? Amen. But if He convicted you, repent. Get it under the blood and then tell Him to take a hike. Amen? Amen. Isn't that good? Yes, it's good. I'm so, listen, uh, you know, it's hard for us preachers because when God puts something in our heart, we always see how we, we see how we believe it's going to go, but it doesn't always come out the way we think, but as long as it comes out how God wanted it, that's always matters. But church, I'm excited. There's a move of God coming. Come on, did you hear me? I've been pressing in and I've been asking about this. Come on, y'all know that. There's a move of God coming. And we get to be a part. He's been preparing us to be full runners. Everything you've been going through, someday you're going to look at it and you're going to say, it's been worth it. It's been, listen, I, I've seen you're going to, they're going to, they're going to, they're going to, you're going to be praying for somebody. Somebody's going to be up here at the altar getting set free and delivered. And you're going to be back there just shouting and jumping up and down going, it's been worth it. It's been worth it. I'm telling you, I saw it. Get ready. Because the house is about to get full. Amen. But it, I'm sorry that it came to this. It wasn't, well, I don't believe it was God's heart for America. Yes, in the last days. Yes, the pressures had to start sometime. But listen, all things work together for good that love God. And the pressure's on. Those that are His true body, those that are His true heart, we're going to start smelling when the pressure's hit. Am I excited about getting thrown in jail? No way. I don't like it there. It's one reason why I straightened up my life. I didn't care for it, John. <laughs> Not really. It didn't affect me much. That's sad to say, to be honest. That, the jail part didn't affect me. I thought that was just part of being tough. No, I never went to prison. But I spent a long time, a lot of time in different counties. Jails. Not proud of it. Never got caught doing anything really bad. The only difference between me and the other guys, they got caught. But I'm so thankful that Jesus can save a guy like me and deliver me and set me on fire for him. And God's been using this crazy country boy's perfume all over the world. I get testimonies from people. Because I stayed in. I stayed the course. When all hell has come against me, when everybody forsakes me, when, when people said bad things about me, I kept my heart right. I walked in love. 
And I can tell you it's all been worth it. This morning as I sit here as your pastor and I look at some of y'all's lives, how much God's changed you. It encourages me to go on and I say it's all been worth it. It's been worth it. It's been worth it. I'll do it again. Just for you. The same way Jesus would too. But I can't make you get there. You've got to choose to walk it on your own. We start saying, listen, I don't enjoy all the pressures I've faced. But it's been worth it. And it's going to be worth it. The best is yet to come. I'm going to be a sweet-smelling perfume. You know, as things turn more and more upside down, will be the people, people just be, there's something different. How do you got joy going through all this stuff? Well, because I started letting God work on me a long time ago. I stopped justifying it. I started really trying to hit the mark. 